Quick disclaimer, this video is a part of a crash course on effects that I'll soon be releasing. However, the content of this video is not specific to effect. So if you're going to be using another library like FPTS or even implementing these utility functions on your own, then no worries, this video is for you. Okay, so let's start with the first concept, and that is function composition. Now, Effect uses function composition for absolutely everything, so it is very important for you to understand this. So, what is it in simple terms? Well, it is simply taking the output of one function and immediately feeding it into another function as its input. So, it is basically a pipeline where data flows from one operation to the next. So, take this code as a Example. We start off with an array, so that's the initial value of this pipeline, and then we use dot map and we apply a function for every single element in this array. And then we do a filter and finally we reduce it over to a single number. So this is a pipeline where data flows from one operation over to the next. And this pipe in particular is implemented via method chaining, where these methods live natively in the prototype of the array. Array. So this map, as we can see, returns an array of numbers. That's why we can use a dot filter. And then this filter also returns an array. And finally, this reduce method exists in the prototype of array. So we can apply it here. But afterwards, since it is a number, we're now in the territory of the prototype of a number. And we can continue piping methods. So we can say to fixed three, and this returns a string, as you can see here. So we can now do a caret position zero, and then to uppercase. So notice how we're piping this through. So how do you create pipes in effect? Well, effect comes with a utility function, which is called a pipe. So we can say pipe, we invoke it, we start with an initial value. And then since it is function composition, we must define functions. So we can say input. And for now, we can create an identity function. That means a function that takes in an input and will output that very same input. And as we can see, input is of type number because we're receiving a five here. But now we can compose this even further so we can get the input and then we can log the input to the console. Now, what happens if we do this? As you can see, input is of type void because log returns void. So as we can see, we're taking the output of this log and turning it into the input for the next function in the pipe. Now, something obvious, but still important to highlight is that the input you get from a previous function does not need to be used. It can be omitted entirely. In this case, we're replacing the input and deriving a new output, where the log we know returns void. But we can omit this, and then we can say hello. And now this returns a string, and the result of this pipe will be a string. Or, well, we can narrow down the type. So it is now going to be hello. But how does this pipe function work, at least at the type level? Well, let's check it out. As you can see, it has some overloads. So let's start with the base case, and that is passing in A and nothing else. As we can see, it is going to return the value as is. So it is basically an identity function. You take in a value and it is going to give it back to you. Now, this is not very useful, is it? Well, if you move over to the second overload, as you can see, we take in A and then we have AB which is a function that takes in as the input A and we output B and the pipe will return B. And then if we move to the third one, we have A, B, C. So we start with A, then we have a function that takes in A, returns B, and then the third one is B, C. So we take in the output of the previous function, in this case, a, B, and we get that as the input for this function and we return a new value and we end up with C. And this extends over and over with a lot of overloads. So now the great thing about function composition is that it inherently can promote modular code. So for example, instead of doing this, we take in 
the input we add 10 and then we log this we can define the function separately so we can have a function add and this one will take a number and it is going to return another function that takes in the number and adds number plus add by and then we can say add 10 and then we can omit this explicit function and simply say console.log. As we can see, our code is now more modular and easier to test and reuse because you're building the computation via functions. So different pieces that you pick together. And so you can decide when to use the at 10, when to use the multiply, when to use whatever other function that you're going to be defining and also designing. So different computations can easily add things that they need and you're not forcing everything into one single function that takes in a hundred arguments. So again, makes the code more modular. Okay, so now let's take a look at flow. So flow also enables you to have function composition. Now, the best way to understand flow is to simply compare it side by side with pipe. So let's say we have processed number. And then we have a function. So process number, we take in X and then here we can import pipe and then we can say X and then we add 10 and then we can multiply the number by itself. And then we can take in the result and say the result is and then X. So if we want to process a number, we need to say is equal to process number and then we can pass in five. As we can see, we initialize the pipe with X, which is the argument that we passed in. However, this requires a little bit of boilerplate because not only do you need to define the argument that you take in, you must also worry about setting it as the first element of the pipe. Now, this is not wrong. You're being very specific, but effect provides another function, which is flow. So you can say const process number two is equal to flow. And then here you must define the type of the argument. And then you can right away add 10. And then now here it is going to infer the type from the previous function. So now we know it is of type number. We can multiply it by itself and then do this. Now these two are identical. These two are functions. As we can see, this one takes in X of type number, returns a string. Same with process number. The only difference is this one is inherently lazy. That means that flow returns a function where you pass in the argument. Meanwhile, a pipe is most of the times eager where you define X and right away it is going to apply the functions. It does not return a function that will do the computations lazily. Now, don't get me wrong. If what you're piping are lazy computations by nature, then a pipe will be lazy. It's just for demonstration purposes. So now here we can say process number two, and as we can see, works exactly the same. Now, how does flow work at the type level? Well, if we come here and read the JS docs, that performs left to right function composition. And the first argument may have any arity, where the remaining arguments must be unary. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the first argument you supply to flow, in this case, this function right here, can have as many arguments as you want. So here we can have X number, B number, etc. So that's why it says the first argument may have any arity. While the remaining arguments, so the functions that we're defining, must be unary. And this makes sense because if you define that this will take a second argument, how will this function pass in a second argument? So you could leverage objects for that or tuples, etc. But you cannot rely on number of arguments. That's why these functions must be unary. Anyway, if we take a look at a flow, we have A extends a read-only array of unknown. And why a read-only array? Well, because it can take as many arguments again. And now the result of this function will be the result 
of the result of the function that it returns. As we can see, AB has the same type signature as what flow itself returns. So that's why it is lazy by nature. Now, if we take a look at the second overload, we have a b again we take in as many arguments we return b and now b becomes the input for bc and in bc we return c so now c becomes the output of the function that it returns meanwhile the input of the function that it returns is the one defined by a b the first argument in flow and this moves on and on so we have a b returns b takes in b returns c takes in c and then returns d and the output of the returned function will be d and again takes in the same arguments as the first argument so looking at the type signature it might not be obvious at a first glance but well if you compare the two side by side it is very clear how it works so let's take a look at this example how can we convert this over to a pipe as you can see, this is a class name's helper function specifically for Tailwind. So if you're a front-end dev, well, you most definitely have used this function. So notice how we have function composition here. We are applying CLSX and then TW merge to the output of the CLSX function. So for that, we can say return and then pipe and then we can say inputs, then we apply CLSX and finally we apply DW merge and that's it. More readable in my opinion. But now we can also use flow so we can say export const cn is equal to flow and then we can say CLSX and then TW merge. And as we can see the signature for the two functions are identical takes in as many class value and returns a string which is likewise present in the cn variable so this is when you can leverage pipes and flow okay so this wraps up the video as i said in the beginning this video is part of a crash course on effect that i'll be releasing soon so make sure to be on the lookout see ya later